Hello everyone and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. This is Colin and today I have a treat for you. I'm going to do a playthrough of the first scenario from the core box, The Lord of the Rings. This is the revised edition because I want to show off the campaign mode because I think the campaign mode looks kind of cool. Also, spoiler alert, <laughs> this is officially my 300th play of this game, and I thought this would be a really cool way going back to the original game. We're only going to use cards that come from this box, so if you just buy this base box, you'll be able to play with the decks that I'm playing with, and you can play through the three scenarios that come in this. Now, even though I do have 300 plays of this game, and I do feel quite comfortable with the rules, I can guarantee you there's going to be times where I might make errors, so make sure to turn on those cling on subtitles because we all know when you're recording or when you're playing you're just sometimes going to make errors so make sure to turn that on because if I miss anything in editing they'll pop up there and if you see any errors let me know in a timestamp and I'll put it there. Lord of the Rings is one of my favorite IPs of all time okay and I get to play the Lord of the Rings the card game on here and I believe this is the first time it's on this channel. Bernd, I can't believe this. <laughs> so we're going to rectify that right now. This is the true LCG. Yeah, Arkham Horror, it's great. Marvel Champions, it's great. But where it all started was this game, and I can't wait to show it to you. Oh, and don't, don't forget the Star Wars LCG as well. Before we jump in, I do want to mention I am going to be playing with tons of upgraded components. A lot of them, for example, this mat, you can't get anymore. It's out of stock. It might come back into stock, but I don't know. Uh, so I won't put a link for this because there isn't one anymore. But some of the other pieces like the upgraded uh, progress tokens that I use or the really cool threat trackers that I'm going to use, I'll put links to all of those those that I can find and that are still available uh, in the description below so make sure to check that out. All right let's start our setup. You are traveling through Mirkwood Forest carrying an urgent message from King Thranduil to Lady Galadriel of Lorien. As you move along the dark trail the spiders gather around you. Because we're playing the core set, I'm going to assume that you haven't played this game and this is the first time you're seeing how this game's played. There's jillions of, of playthroughs out there. Even Rodney Smith has a playthrough of this game from way back when, I think in 2011. So there's tons of those, but I'm still going to explain a little bit more for those new viewers. Maybe you're just thinking of getting into this. So if you already know this game, sorry, it's going to be a little bit slow at first, but don't worry, it will go quickly. This first quest, Passage Through Mirkwood, we have quest cards 1A, 2A, and then two 3As. Okay, I'm going to stack them up with 1A on top. We can see we have a setup here, and it says, Search the encounter deck for one copy of, the for of a forest spider and one copy of Old Forest Road and add them to the staging area, then shuffle the encounter deck. Now, how do we make the encounter deck? Over here, you can see the three different types of cards that we need to include in our encounter deck. So all these cards have different symbols on them. You can see this one looks like a spider, so we know we want to include that encounter set. If you want to play on easy, and we're not doing that, we're playing on the regular mode, uh, you can remove all of the uh, ringed uh, cards like this. You can see this gold ring. Remove those cards and you'll have a slightly easier experience. Here we have our two cards out in the staging area, the Old Forest Road. It generates one threat in the staging area. We are going to be comparing our quest value at the end of every quest phase to the amount of threat that's in the staging area, and whatever difference we have, we can either put progress on the current quest, or if there's an active location, the active location first. So we're actually going to start with no active location, but two cards out in the staging area. This has a response that says after you travel to the Old Forest Road, the first player may choose and ready one character. That's super awesome. And character can be a hero or an ally uh, alike. We also have a forest spider here. This adds two threat to the staging area. So our total threat in the staging area is three. We have an, a fight value of two and a shield value of one with four total health. It has a forced effect, which means we don't have an option of whether do we do this action or not. We have to do the ability, I should say, it's not an action, the ability whenever the specific effect uh, occurs. And that is after a forest spider engages a player, it gets plus one attack, so it'll have three attack until the end of the round. Now, has a shadow effect down here but that's only if it's revealed during uh revealing shadow cards and you'll see how that works as we play but this is not a shadow card so we don't have to worry about that so our total threat in the staging area is three because we're playing in campaign mode, we also have a campaign card, and this says Passage Through Mirkwood, which is, of course, our scenario we're playing. And it says, Part 1, you're playing the campaign mode, setup, 
put Mendor into play. Well, here we have Mendor. It's an ally. Ranged, which means that they can attack enemies either that are engaged with the player controlling them or any other player, but not in the staging area. We do have a response here, and all responses are optional. You don't have to do them, but this one, why wouldn't you? It states, after a quest card is defeated, ready Mendor, then each player draws one card. If Mendor leaves play, though, remove him from the game. He's gone from the game. However, if Mendor leaves play, we actually lose the game, so we cannot have have him lost during the game. That right now is our only additional requirement for the campaign play. After we finish this scenario, we'll flip this card over and that will denote something else for the second scenario in the core box, which is really cool. I like how they did this. The nastiest things they saw were cobwebs, dark, dense cobwebs with threads extraordinarily thick, often stretched from tree to tree or tangled in the lower branches on the side of them. There were none stretched across the path, but whether because some magic kept it clear or for what other reason they could not guess. So this is the back side of that quest card. You can see it says 1B instead of 1A. You can see here we need a total progress of 8. Once we do, we can move to the next quest card. What's interesting about this game is that does not scale. We're playing with four players or one player, you need eight progress. So you can see how Arkham and Marvel, they've definitely scaled a lot more per player count. Uh, here, how the game scales per player count is simply you draw more encounter cards when there are more players. It's one per player. So it's interesting how they definitely have changed that as these LCGs have come out. I've shuffled up the rest of those encounter cards. This will be our encounter deck. Down here is something that I recommend if you do play this game a lot. It's really nice to have a tracker for total quest points and then total threat. And then as you generate more threat or more quest points, you can move them around. And then you can just compare the two so you don't have to recount a billion times. Super helpful. I got this at one of the Cardboard of the Rings listener events in 2019, right before COVID actually. And I love this. This is the... Uh, uh, when, unfortunately, the Shire is being taken down by Saruman. Let's now meet our two decks. Yes, I'm going to play two. You can play with just one, but my favorite way to play this game is two different decks. I feel like you get the best synergy, and I do feel like the game was designed initially as a two-player game, and so that's the way I enjoy playing it. But you can certainly play it solo. It's just slightly swingier, I'd say. What we have here is the three hunters deck. <laughs> Remember, the core set, you only have 12 heroes to choose from, so I don't have a ton of options here. You're going to see I have two tactics here heroes and one leadership hero aragorn okay we first need to determine what is our starting threat value one of the ways and one of the main ways you lose this game is if you threat out that means you have a total threat value of 50 up at the top that tells you how much threat each of your heroes have and you add them together you generally play with three and at the beginning i highly recommend playing with three heroes you're going to add the values up we got 12 plus 11 that's 23 plus nine more that's 32 yeah, we start with 32 threat, and here's these really cool uh, threat trackers that I really like. They're actually magnetic. Uh, so we have 32 on this side. Each hero has a willpower value, an attack value, a defense value, and health. If ever they take damage equal to their health, they will then be removed. And in the campaign version of the game, you actually cannot play with that hero again. You have to choose another hero and increase your base threat by one going forward once you choose your next hero. With each game of the campaign, you want to keep the same heroes. You can change up your deck, but you're supposed to keep the same heroes. If you do want to change your heroes, you always can, but it's a plus one threat penalty for both players. So be careful. <laughs> um, we're going to try and do the three hunters throughout if we can that hill troll in scenario two might be a challenge but we'll deal with it as we play i'll walk through all of their abilities just know that legolas is ranged which means he can attack enemies that are in front of my other deck and we have aragorn here who's sentinel which means he can defend for enemies that are attacking the other player as well our deck will consist of three different spheres of influence tactics leadership and then neutral we do have one neutral card that you can start with and then of course is gandalf we'll have three of those in our deck just know whenever you build your deck the max you can have is three of a card and the deck has to be 50 cards big i'll put a link in the description below for both of the decks so if you want to try them out yourself feel free to do so so i'm going to shuffle these up and then after we look at the other deck we'll have each of them draw six cards and then you can mulligan one time when you play this game our second deck will consist of Eowyn, Denethor, and Berevor as our three heroes. We have two lore and one spirit. 
Once again, this denotes the types of resources we're going to generate. So that means those are the types of cards we can put in our deck. We can have spirit and lore cards. We're not going to see any tactics cards in this deck or any leadership cards because we won't be able to pay for them. So your heroes denote that and they also denote your total uh, starting threat. Our threat, uh, threat here is 10 plus 8 plus 9, a total of 27 threat. So we're under that 30 mark, which is important for scenario two, which you will see after we do this one. <laughs> that number is very important. To start the game, we get to draw six cards each and we can mulligan one time. Here we have our starting hand for the Aragorn deck. I'm going to call this the Aragorn deck and the other one the Eowyn deck, just to make it easier to explain which one is which. But for the Aragorn deck, looks okay. Uh, we have Faramir, which is cool. This Horn of Gundor is cool, but I don't have a lot of allies so that I can play anytime soon because that costs four leadership and I generate one leadership around. So I think I am going to mulligan. Here we have our new hand of six cards and we cannot mulligan again, so we're just going to deal with it. It actually doesn't look terrible. I should be able to get out this veteran axe hand this first round because I do generate two tactics resources around. We'll draw for our Eowyn deck. And looking at this hand, I'm actually okay with it. The biggest thing I wanted was Gleowyn because she can help us, or he, I don't know. He can help us draw cards, and I actually have two of them in my hand. Now, something we'll learn as we play, this is a unique card, so I can't put more than one out. But I do really like that starting hand, so I think I'm going to hold on to this. On the back of the rulebook, they have a really nice round overview. We have a total of seven different phases. A lot of people complain about how the game feels phase heavy, and it is when you think of it as seven phases. But as you play this a bunch, the phases meld together very well that you hardly notice. <laughs> Uh, but we will walk through this for that first round. And then going forward, I'll just make a note. You'll see it kind of pop up what phase we're in. So you know where we are in the seven different phases. So we start with the resource phase. That's when we each will gain resources. Each hero will generate one resource. Now I do want to mention, you can lose a hero and still win the scenario. But if you lose all three heroes, that player is out. And if both players lose all three of their heroes or uh, both of the players uh, go to 50 total threat or more, then you lose the game. I do use upgraded components for the resources as well. I'll put a link in the description below so long as Draconis is still making them. I do really like them. They're kind of a little bit more 3D than the cardboard tokens. Each hero will generate one unless they have some other ability otherwise to generate more than that. And you know what color or type of resource it is based on the hero that it's on. So Aragorn has one leadership, Gimli has one tactics, and Legolas has one tactics. So in essence, I have two tactics and one uh, leadership resource. After gaining our resources, we each get to draw a single card. We drew a Miner of the Iron Hills for the Eowyn deck and a Gondorian Spearman for the Aragorn deck. And look at that, one phase already done. Super easy. <laughs> Planning phase. This is where we can play out allies and attachments. Normally you cannot play allies and attachments during other phases unless they have unique abilities, but generally speaking, this is where you're going to play those cards. You can also play events. You can play events pretty much any time through any of the phases, so long as there's a time where you can do an action or a response, but you'll see how all that works as we play. Just know we're moving into the planning phase. We start with our first player, that's the Aragorn deck. The Aragorn player is going to choose to use his two tactics resources here to be able to play out the veteran axe hand. We're gonna place that out into our play area. Uh, he has no special ability, which is just crazy when you think of all the cards that come later. Yeah, he's not one you'll use much past the core set, but he's got one shield, two health, and two attack. The big thing is that two attack. Hopefully he can help us take out that forest spider. So I'll place him out in our tableau. The Eowyn deck will simply use the two lore resources to sneak out Gleowine, okay? And that's not sneaking, we're just placing them out. But the advantage of Gleowine being out now, she or he gives us one willpower, which is great. Otherwise, it's zero attack, zero defense, two health. But we can also use his action. We can exhaust Gleowine to choose a player that player draws a card. Now, I use these uh, tokens to exhaust characters so I don't have to turn them sideways because on camera, it's really hard to get everything to fit on there when you're exhausting a ton of things. So 
you will see those as my exhaust tokens. So I'm going to choose a player. I'm going to choose the Aragorn deck to draw a card because I know they have a Steward of Gundor and I'm hoping to get it because that can generate a bunch more resources. What's really fun about Lord of the Rings is there's a lot of cooperation built into it. No, that was not. This is just a quick strike cool card but I won't be able to play it this round because I don't have any more tactics resources however later on that could be cool as you can see at the beginning you're not playing a ton of cards that was the planning phase we're going to move right to the quest phase we now need to commit characters to the quest currently in the staging area we have three total threat now what does committing a character to the quest mean essentially they're going out to try and complete this quest they're trying to get us through the passage of Mirkwood through the flies and spiders we need eight progress to move to the next quest card the threat though in this staging area is going to prevent us from doing that so we need to commit characters with willpower to push ourselves through that threat number however the three threat isn't the final number we're each going to draw one encounter card and those will have who knows what type of threat so we have to guess how many characters we want to use which means we exhaust them and then they cannot be used during combat and potentially their abilities can't be used so you're giving up that resource in order to be able to move through the quest but of course that's how you're going to win you're going to win by completing the quest whatever it is and at the beginning we don't know we just know we need eight progress on that quest starting with the first player we will start committing to the quest i'm going to commit mendor to the quest so that means we're adding one to the three threat that's in the staging area aragorn has a pretty awesome ability it states after aragorn commits to a quest i can spend a resource from his resource pool to ready him which means i can send him on the quest and he's ready for battle however i want his resource so i think i'm just going to exhaust him for his two willpower that means right now the uh, aragorn deck is questing for three I'm not looking to complete that quest card this first round, so the only other one I'm going to send is Eowyn. Eowyn has four more willpower, so four plus three is seven. We're beating uh, the total threat right now by three. Now you're going to see Eowyn has an ability that she can discard one card from your hand to give Eowyn plus one until the end of the phase. This effect may be triggered by each player once around, which means the Aragorn deck can discard a card to give Eowyn plus one willpower this is an action what that means is normally we have to commit all of our willpower before we reveal cards however there is an action window after all of the encounter cards are revealed and then we can discard cards to increase her willpower a really strong ability one i really recommend playing with her at first uh, when you want some willpower because she can really help you with that We've now completed committing our characters. We're going to draw one encounter card per player, so that's two, and that's our staging. Then we will have quest, re quest resolution, where we will compare our willpower to the threat in the staging area. The first card we will draw is a treachery okay a lot of treacheries in this game you hate every single one of them <laughs> when revealed each enemy and each location currently in the staging area gets plus one threat until the end of the phase if there are no cards in the staging area driven by shadow gains search okay there are two of them each of them will get plus one threat so that's going to just add two more threat to the staging area so it goes from three to five then we'll discard this card and we'll flip our next one and we have a location because this card was revealed after the treachery we do not need to add the plus one threat here this one just has a travel effect which means if we want to travel to this location we have to do whatever it states there and it has a response where after it leaves play as an explored location which means we get progress on here equal to the number in this corner this three progress we would get the benefit but right now this is just sitting in the staging area as two more threat the total threat in the staging area is three, four, five, six, seven. We quested for seven. We could discard a card to put some progress on the quest. I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm okay leaving it as is. Zero to zero means we do not have a failure of our quest. And I should mention, let's say we did not quest enough. So let's say we only quested for five and there was a total of seven threat in the staging area. We then would each need to increase our threat equal to that difference. So we'd each increase our threat by two. And remember, we lose if we get to 50. And the Legolas, Aragorn, and Gimli decks already at 32. <laughs> and, and at the end of the, each round, I haven't shown you this yet, but at the end of each round, we will be increasing our threat by one. So uh, we do not want to be increasing it a ton because of unsuccessful questing. 
We have now completed the quest resolution. We can move to the travel phase. We currently have two locations in the staging area we can travel to. That means they become the active location. What that means is when we add progress to the quest, we'll actually add progress to these cards instead. Now you might wonder, well, why would we do that? That number is higher here than it is in its threat value. Well, if we don't do that and leave these locations in the staging area, we're just going to get more and more and more threat in the staging area, and you're not going to be able to compensate for it. Better to make this an active location. Yeah, I need three progress to get through it, but that takes the two threat out of the staging area. And then it will be discarded at, after you've actively progressed through it, uh, versus here you just have that two threat sitting there. Of these two locations, the Mountain of Mirkwood is much worse than the Old Forest Road. Heck, the Old Forest Road actually helps us. Uh, that's because this is the first scenario of the entire game. They want to be nice. Well, I feel like right now I'm ready to handle this one. This ability, readying a character, I'm kind of thinking of using next time. So instead, I'm going to make this the active location. When I do that, though, I have to do the travel effect, which means I have to reveal the top card of the encounter deck. What we draw is the Dal Guldur Orcs. Okay, this was a great time to draw this card. You can see that when revealed. The first player chooses one character currently committed to a quest. None of them are committed to the quest. We're done with the quest phase. So that misses. That doesn't happen often. We'll take it. We've now completed the travel phase. Let's go to the encounter phase. We start the encounter phase with optional engagement, and then we go to mandatory engagement checks. Starting with the first player, each player can make one optional engagement. What that means, and this is probably one of the most important things that you can do in this game, is you can optionally engage enemies. Even if their engagement cost is higher than your threat, you can still engage them, so long as the card doesn't say you can't. This is how combat-heavy decks can pull enemies away from maybe quest-heavy decks or willpower-heavy decks. However, if we look at the enemies on the board here, both of them have engagement costs, 10 and 25, that are less than our total threat values of our two decks, so both of them are coming down no matter what. With our optional engagement, though, we can choose which way they're going to go. If we went to the mandatory engagement, then the first player looks at the highest engagement cost enemy that would engage them because that cost of that engagement is equal to or less than their total threat, and then that enemy engages them. And then you keep going around the table doing that same thing until all of the enemies are no longer in the staging area or all the enemies that are in the staging area have a higher engagement cost than we have as threat. As I'm explaining it, it sounds complex, but it's really not. <laughs> what we're going to do is have the Aragorn deck optionally engage this forest spider. That means they can actually attack this forest spider and they can deal with the plus one attack that it'll have when it engages them in this first round. That means what we will do, I think we're going to do this, we're going to have the um, Eowyn deck optionally engage the Dal Gordur orcs. And then in the staging area, all we have is the Old Forest Road. So next round when we quest, we only have one threat in the staging area. We've completed that encounter phase, we move to the combat phase. The first thing we do is deal shadow cards. Then the enemies attack, then we get to attack. Starting with the first player, you're going to look at all the enemies that are engaged with them. We have this forest spider. We are going to place out a shadow card, which is just the top card of the encounter deck face down. We don't know what it is. We're going to place it on that enemy. If there are multiple enemies, you're supposed to put the shadow card first on the highest level uh, engagement cost card because sometimes your deck may run out. If your deck of encounter cards run out, you actually don't shuffle more in, which is kind of weird, but that's just a rule that the game has. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, so really, you just want to look at the highest cost and put out shadow cards, but it doesn't matter because it's all random. So we're placing one on the forest spider, and then over here we have the dull Goldur orcs with the Eowyn deck. They'll also get a shadow card, which we'll place on top of them. That forest spider is going to attack us for three damage. Now, we can choose to go undefended and not declare anyone as a defender, but that means whatever damage that forest spider does, we have to choose one of our heroes and they have to soak all of it and they ignore their shields. So I don't want to do that. We are going to defend and you normally can only defend with one character. doesn't matter if I have three available like I do right now. I can only choose one of them and I'm going to choose Gimli. Gimli has a pretty awesome ability. He gets plus one attack for each damage token on him. So I kind of want him to take damage. <laughs> That's why I'm choosing him because he only has two shields. So right now he's guaranteed to take one damage. I'm just hoping that he doesn't take five damage uh, because if he does take five, he's 
removed and I can no longer play with him for the rest of the campaign. Now you can see I have two shields and five health. That means this attack would have to be seven to actually kill him. That's because I'm defending with him. If I chose to go undefended, then those two shields don't count. The forest spider will then reveal their shadow cards. So remember, they're attacking for two. They get a plus one just in that first round when they engage a player. And, oh boy, they do have a shadow effect. It says the attacking enemy gets plus one attack, plus three instead if this attack is undefended. If that had been undefended, it would have killed Gimli. That would have dealt five damage. And that goes straight to a hero. Wow. That's why you generally are going to want to defend. There's going to be times later on when you don't. But right now, we definitely want to, wanted to. So this attack was a total of four. And then we're going to take this shadow card and discard it. Four minus two means we have Gimli taking two damage. However, his attack value now is four, which we like. The Eowyn deck has these dull golder orcs, so we're going to use Denethor to defend. He has three shields, that's why I'm doing it, but he only has three health, so we've got to be careful. He has an action that we can exhaust him to actually look at encounter cards. I'm not going to do that right now. Instead, we're going to get attacked for two damage, and we have another shadow effect. It's the same card. Good thing we defended. That's going to be plus one, so that's attacking for three Actually, they don't get a plus one. So you know what? Denethor fully blocks that. No damage is done. Now that we've finished doing the attacks by the enemies, we can attack back. Starting with our first player, we'll have Legolas attack. Now we have that forest spider right in front of us. We're not going to attack that though. We can attack range. And with three damage, we can take out those dull Goldur orcs that are engaged with our questing deck. I want to protect them. I think we can handle that forest spider, especially because now it only attacks for two. So we're using Legolas for that. And Legolas has an awesome ability. It says, after Legolas participates in an attack that destroys an enemy, place two progress tokens on the current quest. However, we have an active location. This part is always confusing to people. The uh, active location always gets progress first. So we're going to place two progress on the active location. We only need one more, and this location would actually be discarded. So I like that. Our Aragorn deck still has a veteran axe hand. Let's go ahead and attack. We're going to attack for two damage. That will just dink this forest spider by one. The reason being because he has one shield, so he blocks one of the attack, and he has one damage on him, but he will last for next round and we'll have to deal with him. However, I'm not too terribly worried about him. We should be able to take him out. That's now going to end the combat phase, except for we kept Berevor already over here because I want to use her ability. We're going to exhaust her, and you can do this action anytime you have a player action window. And it states, exhaust Berevor, Berevor, choose a player, that player draws two cards. Yeah, we're going to choose Aragorn. We have the Horn of Gundor and Quick Strike. Cool, but still no Steward. Unlike in Arkham, there is no hand limit in this game. You can literally have your entire deck in your hand, totally legit. <laughs> uh, I don't have that, but I will say Aragorn has tons of cards. I have three of those stewards. We're digging a little. Uh, we have finished the combat phase. We now move to the refresh phase. First thing we get to do is ready all of our cards. So all of these tokens that are on our cards, we're going to simply remove them and all those characters are ready for the next round. Then we'll each increase our threat by one. That will put the Eowyn deck up to 28 threat and our Aragorn deck up to 33 a total threat. Oh yeah, and these are magnetic, so watch out. Finally, we'll pass our first player token, and I have this really cool Cardboard of the Rings token that I used for my first player token. That's from 2021. Uh, we'll move that over to the Eowyn deck, which includes Mendor moving over to that deck. And we'll simply rinse and repeat, starting with that resource phase. In that resource phase, all of our heroes generate one total resource. Eowyn didn't use hers last time, so she has two this time. And that will be the same with Aragorn having two. Then we each draw a card. The Aragorn deck does get their Steward of Gundor, and we have a Gandalf card. This is a neutral colored card, so you can pay for this with any resource type for the Eowyn deck. At the beginning of the planning phase, I actually think our Eowyn deck is not going to put anything else out. Ooh, let's definitely use Gleowine. This time we'll use it for us. We'll draw a card. Ooh, we have the um, Lorien's Wealth. I've never used that card, but cool. We're putting it into our hand. The Aragorn deck will use two of our resources from Aragorn. 
that will mean we can play out our Steward of Gondor. The most ridiculous card in the game. I love it. We're going to use it. It says attached to a hero. The attached hero gains the Gondor trait. And you know what Denethor's saying. No! <laughs> uh, this says we can exhaust the Steward of Gondor to add two resources to the attached hero's resource pool. A.K.A. this card pays for itself instantaneously because we will exhaust it it's an action we can do that at any time uh, that we can do an action from a player and you can do that during the planning phase and we've just generated two more resources we're then going to use those two resources to put out the Celebrin stone we're going to place this out on aragorn as well now you're going to see it says attached to a hero restricted Oh, you know what? We could have fun. We don't have to put this on Aragorn. We could actually put this on Eowyn. And I think I might do that because Eowyn's going to be the one always questing. There might be times where Aragorn doesn't want to quest. There is the disadvantage that if the attached here is Aragorn, he also gains the, and that's a spirit resource icon. Well, I don't have any spirit cards in this deck. So it doesn't seem like it makes any sense. I'm going to instead put this onto Eowyn. And that's what's cool about this game. You can put attachments on other players' cards, which is cool. We'll slide this on to Eowyn. And then Eowyn will get plus two willpower. And I do have willpower tokens for that to help me remember. So her willpower now is six instead of four. Now you'll notice this restricted keyword. What that keyword means is each character can only hold two restricted items normally. So we have one restricted here. We could hold one other restricted one and that's it. Also, don't forget this is a unique card, which means even though I may get another one in my hand, I can't put it out while that card is out in play. And that's out in play in anybody's uh, area, even if it's not my deck. So I couldn't have, for an example, an Eowyn card in my deck and put it out because we already have Eowyn out in the game. The last thing I think we're going to do over here is spend two tactics resources. We're drop dropping out the Dwarven Axe because it just looks awesome. This is restricted. It will go on to Gimli. Attached to a hero restricted. The attached hero gains plus one attack. However, it's plus two if it's attached to a, he a hero that is a dwarf. Well, Gimli's definitely a dwarf. I have these tokens here to help me remember the additional attack Gimli has. He has two more from the two damage and two from the actual axe. That's four plus two. He attacks now for six. Yeah, he should take out that forest spider with one fell swoop. We've completed our planning phase. We'll move to the quest phase. We start with our first player. That's the Eowyn deck. We will definitely send Eowyn. She's questing for six. We'll use Berivor for eight, and we'll use Mendor for nine. So we have nine questing on this side of the table. With that nine, I don't think the Aragorn deck will quest with anything. In the staging area, we have a whopping one threat. I'm feeling pretty good, but usually when you feel good is when this game kicks you in the pants. However, this is the first quest, so that maybe won't happen. <laughs> we'll see. We need to draw two cards from our encounter deck. Our first one I absolutely hate. We have Caught in the Web. The player with the highest threat level, which is definitely the Aragorn deck, attaches this card to one of their heroes. It counts as a condition attachment with the text, the attached hero does not ready during the refresh phase unless you pay two resources from that hero's resource pool. That card stinks. We're going to have that attached to Aragorn. He's caught in a web. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get rid of that. Our second encounter card, we have the Forest Gate. This is another good one. Response, after you travel to the forest gate, the first player can draw two cards. Cool, we'll put that out into the staging area. There's three threat in the staging area. We quested for nine. I'm not going to discard any cards to increase that with Eowyn's ability. Not yet, at least. That means we can place a total of six progress. Now, the first progress has to go onto this card and clears it. And we do get the response, which we'll look at in a second. But we also get to place five progress on the main quest. We need eight, so we can't go uh, to the next quest card yet. But soon we'll be able to. We have a response here that states after Mountain of Mirkwood leaves play as an explored location, each player may search the top five cards of their deck for one card, add it to their hand, and then shuffle their deck. The Eowyn player has a couple miners of the Iron Hills, but we have one in our hand. I really like this test of will in case one of those really bad treachery cards come out, comes out. So I'm going to put that into my hand and I'll shuffle these back in. The Aragorn deck has a couple of these ever vigilant cards, another Celebrian Stone, another Veteran Axe Hand. The one I'm going to keep is this sneak attack for sure, hoping I can get a Gandalf into my hand. We've completed our quest phase. Let's go ahead and travel to the Forest Gate. After you travel to the Forest Gate, the 
first player may draw two cards. Don't mind if I do. We'll see what our two cards are. And we have, ooh, Hasty Stroke and another Miner of the Iron Hills. We have no enemies in the staging area, so we can skip the encounter phase. We will simply grab one shadow card for the enemy that's engaged with the Aragorn deck, and now we have to choose someone to defend. The Forest Spider is only attacking for two. I'm really hoping that maybe he gets a plus one, and that's it. Hit Gimli and get Gimli just a little bit stronger. I know it's a little bit risky, but I think I'm going to still defend with him because I have enough attack, three, four, five, to take out that Forest Spider, no problem. The attack will be for two plus... Oh, we do have a shadow effect. The defending player must choose and exhaust one character they control. Two characters instead if the attack is undefended. No, we are defending. Thank goodness. You want to defend in this first scenario, it seems. This means, though, the attack does no damage and we have to exhaust a character. I guess we'll exhaust the veteran axe hand. That deals with all of the attacks by the enemies. Let's take this forest spider out. We'll attack for three and three. That's a total of six. This four spider only needed, uh, well, four. One to go through the shield and three to take out its health. It's gone now. No enemies on the board. Just know when we ready, Aragorn will not ready because he does not have two resources that he can spend. So we'll go to that refresh step, refreshing all of our cards and increasing our threat and drawing a card. The Aragorn deck will go to 34 threat and the Eowyn deck will go to 29 threat. We'll then have each character generate resources, and by characters, of course, I mean heroes, during the resource phase, and we'll each draw a card. We have the Favor of the Lady, and we have the Guard of the Citadel. First player will move back over to the Aragorn deck. The first thing he's going to do is exhaust his Steward of Gundor. He can still use that attachment even if he's exhausted because the attachment exhausts on its own. So he now has three resources. We're going to place out two allies, spending two leadership and two of the tactics resources. The Gondorian Spearman does have a sentinel ability, and he also has a response that says after he is declared as a defender. So once he's declared himself as a defender, before even being attacked, he'll deal one damage to the attacking enemy. If that thing only has one health, boom, takes him out. That goes through shields because it just deals a damage from the effect. It's not an attack that looks at armor. So that's a really cool and sometimes really fun ability. This will wipe out our tactics resources though, and we'll only have one leadership resource. I'm realizing last round I probably should have used Denethor's ability, but I forgot. Sorry about that. We're going to use Berevor's two lore resources to put out the Mine of Iron Hills uh, dwarf. It states, after he enters play, choose and discard one condition attachment from play. So anywhere on the board, you know what we're getting rid of. We're getting rid of Aragorn's condition. I knew there's conditions in these first ones, so that's why I wanted to make sure to put those in your deck. Definitely put them in if you can in those first three scenarios, because those conditions can be brutal. I'm thinking we should also make Eowyn ridiculous. We're going to play the favor of the lady. This is going to give, it costs two spirit resources, but it's going to give Eowyn two, or I should say just one more willpower. But one more willpower gets her up to three more on here, plus four. That's seven total willpower. She could go through a quest card on her own almost. <laughs> so cool. Moving into that quest phase, the Aragorn deck is only going to send one with Mendor for one willpower. We'll add seven more with Eowyn for eight. And then let's do two more with Bear 4 for 10, because right now I don't feel like we need more cards. So that gives us a 10 to a 1. Drawing our first encounter card, and we have, when revealed, deal 1 damage to each exhausted character. Ooh, that's 2 on the Eowyn side and 2 on the Aragorn side. I think we can take that. Both Eowyn and Berevor will take a damage. Aragorn will also take a damage, but he's got four health remaining. Mendor, though, will only have two, so we've got to be a little careful there. We'll flip over our second card, and we have the Chieftain Uthank. Okay, uh, 35 total engagement costs. So right now, we could leave him in the staging area if we wanted, because we're at 34 engagement and 29, or threat, I should say, right now. This has 6 health, 3 shield, 3 attack, 2 threat. He gets plus 2 attack for each resource on him. After he attacks, just place a resource. Ooh, he could get strong fast. But this is a victory card. 
What a victory card means is once that card is removed from the game by us dealing enough damage to it, it's removed forever. So if ever we have to shuffle the encounter deck, we will not shuffle this card back in. It's removed. And then if you want to keep track of your score, you can look at your victory points and that can help you determine how well you did. We quested for a total value of 10. Our threat in the staging area is only 3, so that means we get to place 7 progress. 4 go on the forest gate, 5, 6, 7, that means we have enough, 5 plus 3 is actually 8, that's just enough, that will get us through this uh, specific quest card, and we'll go to quest card 2A. As you move through Mirkwood, hounded by spiders, the forest path forks before you. This quest card only needs two up progress to move to the next one. Yeah, you won't be here long, generally. <laughs> Unsure of what lies ahead, but spurred by the urgency of your message, you choose a path and proceed. When you defeat this stage, proceed to one of the two A Chosen Path stage cards behind this at random. Mendor here also has a response. After a quest card is defeated, ready Mendor, then each player draws a card. Don't mind if I do. That is new from the campaign. You usually don't have an objective ally with you. I like it. So we'll draw a Gondorian Spearman and another one of the Lorian's Wells. The quest phase is complete. Moving into that travel phase, we'll definitely travel to the Old Forest Road. After you travel to the Old Forest Road, the first player may choose and ready one character they control. Aragorn, my man, is now ready. During the encounter phase, our Aragorn deck will most certainly optionally engage that Chieftain Uthuk. And then he'll get a shadow card. I am most certainly going to choose to defend with that Gondorian Spearman. When I do that, we immediately deal one damage to this Chieftain. Okay, He now only has five health, but he still has three shield. He's attacking for three. That's totally going to kill that Gondorian Spearman. Let's see how much. Uh, we do have a shadow effect. Attacking enemy gets plus one if this attack is undefended. Raise your threat by three. It's not undefended. So it's attacking for four. That's going to kill our Gondorian Spearman. Okay, which is a bummer. But hey, he did his duty. He did his duty. Then we have to place out one resource onto that Chieftain. And now that Chieftain's attack value is five. However, that's not going to matter. We're going to kill this thing. We need a total of eight attack. Well, we've got three, four, five, six right there with Gimli, seven, eight, nine with Legolas, and that chieftain is gone, and it's a victory, so we'll remove it from the game. Legolas also defeated an enemy, so that means we get to place two progress on the active quest, but there's an active location, so it has to go on the location first. One more, and we've gone through that. Before we move to the refresh phase, let's use a Gleowine. Exhaust Gleowine to choose a player that player draws a card. Why don't we have the Aragorn deck draw a card? He will draw one more of the guards of the Citadel. During the refresh phase, we'll ready all of our characters, increase our threats, so the A1 deck is at 30, Aragorn deck is at 35, and the first player token will move back over to the A1 deck, which means Mendor is over there. Then to start the next round, we'll generate all of our resources, and then we'll each draw cards. We have another, the favor of the lady. I don't think that's limited. It isn't. Oh my gosh, we're just going to keep powering up our... Um, are questing. Oh, and we have the Valiant Sacrifice. Too bad we didn't have that just a second ago. At this point, my sole goal with the Eowyn deck is apparently making Eowyn as beastie as possible. <laughs> We're going to spend both of these resources putting out another favor of the lady. You can see there's no restriction and there's it's not unique. So I can do that and that will actually give her another willpower, putting her up to eight willpower when she quests. On the Aragorn side of things, let's just generate some more resources. We have four leadership resources now to play with. Why don't we use two of them to put out another guard of the Citadel, if nothing else. It's uh, fodder for defending, <laughs> so we've got two of those out. We'll then use one resource from Gimli so we can put out the Horn of Gundor. It says attached to a hero restricted, so we can only have two restricted items. I could put this one on Gimli if I wanted. After a character is destroyed, add one resource to the attached hero's resource pool. Yeah, let's do it. You know, uh, And this is unique, by the way, so we can only have one of these. What the heck? Thematically, and this uh, encounter is generally pretty easy, let's put it on Aragorn. We have literally nothing in the staging area, so let's quest with Eowyn. That will give us eight, eight to zero. We'll draw our two encounter cards, starting with the Great Forest Web. This has a travel effect that we have to exhaust heroes to travel there. And that adds two threat. And we have the Dull Goldur Beastmaster. 
Oh, when it attacks, you deal it one additional shadow card, and it also adds two threats. So that's a total of four threat. Two plus two is four. We quested for eight, so one to clear this out. Two, three, we've completed another quest card. Since we completed a quest card, Mender will ready, well he was already ready, then each player draws one card. The Eowyn deck grabs Hasty Stroke, and the Aragorn deck grabs Gandalf. The trail winds into one of the darkest, most tangled parts of the forest. You sense that a foul, dark presence is haunting you, and you move quickly in an attempt to avoid its evil. We have Don't Leave the Path. The shadow grows darker and you realize that a foul presence is aiming to draw you from the path. You must defeat it to pass this way. When, when revealed, each player must search the encounter deck and discard pile for one spider of their choice and add it to the staging area. The players must find and defeat the uh, unguliant spawn to win the game. Well, you know I'm going to grab that as one of the spiders. All of a sudden, we have more than one enemy to deal with. Look at this unguliant spawn. It has, when revealed, each character currently committed to a quest gets minus one willpower. We don't have to worry about that. No one is committed to a quest. Remember, that quest has completed, so we're fine with that. Plus, I don't care about their willpower. Of course, we know the forest spider. We've already seen it before. We now move to the travel phase, and I could decide to go to the great forest web. I don't think so, though. I don't want to exhaust one hero each, so I'm just going to leave this. If you look at this quest card, we need zero progress. All we need to do is kill this ungoliant spawn, so I'm not even going to worry about that. <laughs> we'll soak the two threat. I mean, Eowyn won't even know that that's there. She's questing so hard. So we'll start with that optional engagement. We will definitely have the Aragorn deck optionally engage this Ungoliant spawn, because that's the one that we we need to kill. If we defeat that Ungoliant spawn, we win. I'm realizing the Eowyn deck is actually first player, so they should have chosen to optionally engage first. That's okay. We were going to have them optionally engage the four spider, so that works. We've each optionally engaged. Now we have one enemy out. We would look at the threat value of the Eowyn deck because they are first player. Their threat is 30. That is less than the engagement cost of 35. So the Dolgordur Beastmaster does not engage them. The Aragorn deck is not as lucky. Their total threat value is 35. So this enemy is coming down. That means we're getting one shadow card over here on this forest spider that's engaged with the Eowyn deck. The Dulgur Beastmaster will get two shadow cards because of its a forced effect, and the Unguliant Spawn gets one shadow effect. And by shadow effect, I mean shadow card. Who knows if it has an effect? The Eowyn deck now needs to defend against that forest spider. That's why we have Denethor. He will block for three. Three shields. Hopefully he doesn't get hit for six damage. We'll flip over that card on the forest spider, and we have no shadow effect, so the attack of three doesn't do any damage. Over here, we have the unguliant spawn that is going to attack for five. Let's use this first guard of the citadel. What are they here for? Yeah, fodder. <laughs> the attack is for five. We have no shields, but two health, uh, no shadow effect, uh, but that means this guard of the citadel is toast. Because we have the Horn of Gundor, though, after a character is destroyed, now destroyed, we didn't discard him, he was totally annihilated and eaten by that Ungulian spawn, we get to add one resource to the attached hero's resource pool. So Aragorn gets richer when his people die. Don't ask how that works, but it does. The other thing we're going to do, because it sounds fun, we saw that Vigilant uh, Sacrifice. So we're going to use this. It costs one leadership resource. After an ally card leaves play. Now, leaves play could be for anything. It could also be for um, different effects that would cause a character to leave play. They don't have to be destroyed. That uh, card's controller gets to draw two cards. And we just so happen to draw two feints. Plus, I had a feint in my hand. So why don't we use a feint, huh? So for the before that second enemy attacks, we have an action window. We are going to spend that one resource that we have on Legolas. And this says the chosen enemy engaged with a player. That enemy cannot attack that player this phase. So that Beastmaster is going to look at us and we're just going to dodge around left and right. And it doesn't attack us. Which means at the end of this round we'll just discard those shadow cards with no effect. Now we can move to attacking and we need to take out that Ungulian spawn. The first thing we are going to do is spend one Aragorn resource. We're going to play Sneak Attack. Put one ally card into play from your hand. At the end of the phase, if that ally is still in play, return it to your hand. This is what we call a sneaky Gandalf. <laughs> Who doesn't love a sneaky Gandalf? 
this card at the end of the round discard Gandalf from play well we won't have to because at the end of the phase this will actually jump back into our hand and his response is amazing I only had to pay one cost for him and it says after Gandalf enters play choose one draw three cards no deal four damage to one enemy yes or reduce your threat by five now let's deal four damage to an enemy Three plus one is four total damage. This Ungoliant spawn now only has five health. I'm pretty sure then we can kill it with everything on the board here. We have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, plus Mendor over here for twenty. Twenty damage. That Ungoliant spawn is done. <laughs> that was awesome. After completing this first quest, we get to look at the resolution on this side. It says each player earns one copy of the Mendor's support boon card. Add that earned card to the campaign pool. That means we're going to put this into our deck and shuffle it. It doesn't count as one of our 50 cards. It says only one copy of Mendor's support can be played each round. Mendor gets plus two, plus two, and plus two till the end of the round. That's cool. So we each will have one of those. Since we completed the Don't Leave the Path, add the Lingering Venom Burden, Burden card to the campaign pool. And you know how many times I tried to say that? I couldn't say that for whatever reason. This card has a Surge ability. You haven't seen Surge, you likely will in the next two scenarios. Surge means, hey, guess what? You drew that, doesn't count as one of your two cards, so draw another one. And it has a when revealed, each player must choose either to exhaust each damage character you control or deal two damage to the hero you control with the most damage on it. Oh, or if it's a shadow, exhaust each damaged character you control. Pretty horrendous. So that will be in the encounter deck now for the rest of the two games in the core set. Well, there you have it. That was quest one of the Lord of the Rings, the card game. You better believe we're doing it two and three without a doubt. I'm probably just going to jump right into them because of how much I love this game. That was my 300th play. I love it. Thank you so much for joining me for that 300th play. I really appreciate it. If you want to see other great games, we do tons of different playthroughs on this channel. Baird does unboxings. We do live streams generally on Tuesdays. Right now we're going through the Sleeping Gods Distant Skies, which is super fun. But who knows when you're watching this, we'll be playing a different game. So check that out. That's on Tuesday nights. Thank you to all of our patrons. We really appreciate your support. It's because of all of you we're able to keep doing what we're doing. And if if you're excited to see what comes next, then I need you to meet me at the table. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.